Hi everyone, my name is Christian, and I want to tell you about the time my dad ruined my life. It happened really fast before I even knew it, but it was the worst thing that could have happened. Alright, listen up and watch this kids. I'm a second child in the family, the youngest son. My older brother Ralph has been living apart in another city for a long time. He's a successful businessman and I'm a spoiled kid of late. My parents always called my brother promising and me a slacker. That's how I grew up. I won't say that we were rich or poor. We lived about average, but we didn't starve. Anyway, I never had any desire to study. It seemed to me that since I was such a shitty, defective person, wouldn't it be better to fit in? Every day I did something at school. I was disruptive. I broke things. I fought. I even ran away from school. And I scratched cars. At some point, I realized that I just couldn't live without it anymore. My dad and mum told me off every day. Shit. The only punishment they gave me was a belt. A spanking. A pocket money cut off. The internet. My smartphone. My computer. None of it helped. Because I learned to predict my punishment. That is, committing a transgression already knew the consequences for. But could not hold back and still committed them over and over and over again. And then... My parents' patience finally snapped, and my father decided to destroy me. I remember coming home from school, and some strange guests were sitting there. Men in military uniforms. They looked back at me. Hello? Hello, Christian. Hello, son. Come in, sit down. We have an important conversation for you. What is it? Meet Mr. Jackins. He's a former soldier. He's a retired ladle carrier, but a professional. And this is Mr. Grigor. He is an active soldier. They both work in the military school now. Nice. Only, what am I for? From tomorrow, you'll be a cadet. What? What the f- Stand down! The military man suddenly stood up sharply from the couch, straightened up, and called me by my last name so loudly, and then said that they would teach me the rules of life and how to become a real man. This prospect did not please me. You have ten hours to pack. Take- only what you need. Tomorrow they're coming to pick you up. I'm here for a reason. Your grandfather and I were friends, and I'm doing my duty as a friend. You can forget about him. He won't be offended. He's already dead. Christian! Am I wrong? I see you've got a sense of humor. Let's see what else you've got going for you. See you tomorrow. They got up and started marching towards the door. As soon as Dad closed it behind them, I yelled like crazy. Dad, how could you? I mean, how could you send me there? It's simple, son. Really simple. You're already out of control. Look at Ralph. Ralph? Of course he is. He's so good, so smart and successful, not like me. Instead of being jealous, you should be smart. You and mum gave him everything. You gave him all your brains and left me nothing. Go and pack your things. We argued for a long time, but I understood that this was the end. I packed my things somehow and tried to squeeze pity from my mother, but she too was unwavering. I didn't even recognize her. I packed my bag and the last thing I said to my dad was, don't break my life. And my dad said that I had already broken it by myself. I'll never forget that feeling of resentment, of being unwanted. It felt like I'd been abandoned, abandoned. I couldn't come to terms with it. And then, when we came to this military school, I was given a uniform, pointed to the building and the room. Everything was so austere, level, clean and crisp, and it made me sick to my stomach. I unpacked my things, changed my clothes, and then the supervisor came in and took me somewhere. They sat me down on the stool in front of a mirror, and then they turned on the machine. Am I gonna get a shave? No, no. I resisted because I didn't want them to mess up my hair, but they wouldn't listen. One was holding, and the other was shaving me almost bald. That's the way everybody's hair looked in there. Afterwards, they chased me to lunch. The cadets, who were already used to the situation, looked at me like I was a black sheep. I was carrying a tray of disgusting soup, something like cutlets and compote. There was no appetite, so I chose a table away from everyone else and sat down alone. But three guys joined me right away. They started a dialogue like, What's up? Who am I? And where am I from? I answered reluctantly, and suddenly one of them stood up sharply, grabbed me by the collar, and said that it is customary here to answer clearly and distinctly to my superiors. I swallowed my saliva and he said to me, Lucky for you, I'm a cadet too. <laughs> it wasn't funny. As the guys were leaving, they flipped the tray over my head and the soup dripped down my uniform. At that point, Mr. Jenkins came in and he looked at me with a look that told me to change my uniform. I ran to change my uniform and wash the dirty one. It was kind of awful. Half the day seemed like a week. I didn't know what to do or how to be. 
Secretly from everyone else, I found the phone and called my dad. Dad, take me away. I'll make it up to you. Honestly, promise you. No, you have to go through with it. Otherwise, you'll grow up to be something you don't understand. I'll do well in school. I'll do what you say. Just take me away. No, son, bye. He hung up and then Mr. Jackins walked by. Since he is our principal, he said that he would forgive me this time. But the next time I called home, I would be punished to the fullest. In the evening, it was bedtime. I wanted to go to bed as soon as possible. I just closed my eyes and a pillow came over me. I screamed and tried to fight back, but they immediately lifted me out of bed and took me out of the room in my underwear. It was those guys again. They dragged me to the pool in the other building. It was freezing and they threw me into the chilly water. I barely swam out of there. To make a long story short, this is just a small part of the horror that I went through every day. In total, I had 33 bruises on my body after just two months. New ones appeared on top of the old ones. We fought. I was beaten. I was bullied. But in the end, I was stupidly used to the physical pain and didn't even feel any of the blows. Christian? Yeah? Your father's calling you. Yes, sir. I went to the phone and said hello in a steady voice. Hello, son. How are you? It's been two months and you haven't called. I didn't have time, sir. What? They don't let you live at all? I'm fine, sir. Why, sir? I'm dad. Habit. How's mum? Good. She's a little sick. She's worried about you. I have a new formation now. I have to go. Hi, mum. Bye. I hung up. Why did I do that? There was no lineup. I just didn't feel the need to talk. I didn't really care about what was going on. The hell was going on in our corpse strengthened me. So much that it's impossible to put into words. In another six months, I was already meeting newcomers myself, conducting similar rituals myself, mocking them, and I wasn't sorry. I became stronger and more resilient physically and generally closed myself off spiritually to anyone. I was so used to it that I knew who to hit and how to hit, where to hit my opponent to knock him out, and the unpalatable soup seemed like manna from heaven. Christian, you've grown in my eyes. You've become a real man. Thank you, sir. I'll give you two days leave to go home. Your mother's sick. Yes, sir. I rode home without much feeling. To think, I used to try to go back there and now, no. I greeted my parents with a hug and a smile, but there was a chill inside. We sat down to lunch, mum buzzing over the table, serving me meat, salads, rice. I ate really well. Everything was delicious. Dad asked questions about the school. I answered short and clear. Then my mother came up and hugged me from behind at which point my reflex kicked in and I grabbed her arm and almost punched her in the jaw. I'm not used to being hugged from behind, so I could barely control myself. My mum got really scared and so did my dad. I apologised, of course, and said I didn't mean it and went on eating. Son, you almost hit her. What's wrong with you? I had a reflex. What reflex? You're home. It's okay. It's just me and mum. Dad, I apologise. I didn't mean to scare her. But you did, and you're sitting there like nothing happened. Father, didn't you send me to the school? Didn't you say that I should become a different person? Disciplined, strict, and calm? Well, I am calm, strict, and disciplined, aren't I? Or is that not enough? That's not what I meant. What did you mean? Remember when I called you? Did I beg you to pick me up? But you said no. You hung up on me. You rejected me. And now you're saying I've become too aloof? You made a choice for me and I accepted it. What are you missing, Dad? Dad stopped talking and I thanked my mother for dinner, packed my things and went back to school. My home was there now. What do I regret? Nothing. It had to be that way. I am a different person now. Maybe someday I'll say thank you to my dad, but not for now. Hello everyone, my name is Carl. I am a full 15 years old. My father is the president of a very large company in the United States. Our family is billionaires, but I work as a waiter. Do you want to know why? Now I'll tell you everything, and while you listen, watch and do not forget to immediately subscribe to this channel. Let's start with the fact that when I was born, we were poor. Yes, it is hard to believe, now it is customary to think that if you are poor, you will never achieve anything, but my father is the best example of what it is possible to earn yourself and he did it. When he and my mother got married, they had nothing, no place to live, no car and the day came when it was necessary to pay the bills, including paying for the apartment. There was nothing. My mother had a little me. She could not go to work. Then my father, desperate, went out on the street and just went to shops and cafes, offering the services of a cleaner, a salesman, yes, anyone. 
he did not disdain work and his mother respected him for it. That day he came back late at night, but managed to earn money, and although dad was terribly tired, he always found time to play with me. So they lived for several years, until one day, dad came as a cleaner in a large company. He was mopping the floors after the director's meeting. One of the men kicked dad's mop and called him a laborer. My father was a proud man, but with a brain. He could have hit him hard, but he knew he had a family to feed, so he straightened up and said something to the man that the others didn't even comment on. Dad told that man that the project they were working on would fail just because his concept was built wrong. They were going to build houses for the poor and sell them. Dad himself lived in such conditions and knew perfectly well what amenities were really needed. The guy just laughed and said he wasn't going to listen to the janitor's opinion. The idea of the project is beautiful, Gillies, that it is led by a person who does not understand and is not educated, my father said. He turned on Dad. He was hurt in front of his supervisor and that offended him the most. Then the most important director intervened. He reassured his subordinate, then turned to his father. He asked him a couple of questions and Dad answered. He just said his opinion and gave a couple of free tips. The director asked why my father worked as a cleaner if he was good at business. Then Dad said that a real businessman does not disdain any dirty work. It's hard to believe, but my father was put on probation after the dialogue. That subordinate was angry. He was furious. The very next day, my father came to train. He immediately showed himself. The internship lasted three long months, but it was paid. This money was enough for a living. After a while, Dad was hired for a long and hard work. It was a holiday for our family. Over the years, my father rose higher and higher. I grew up, we already bought our own house, two cars, and my mother gave birth to another daughter, my sister. And then we just got rich, until my father started running the company himself, which he came to as a cleaner. Despite the money, connections, and position, Mariana and I, my little sister, were brought up simply, without being tied to money. If you need money, go to work, Dad would say. Of course, we didn't need anything. We ate, we went to great schools, we had everything, but if I needed my own money, my father sent me to work. So in the summer, I worked part-time with neighbors, and then with this money, my friends and I went camping or went to parties. It didn't bother me that I was working. However, many people around were outraged and considered my father's upbringing ruthless. He asked them to mind their own business. I didn't like working at first. At first I just wanted to ask my mother for money. She gave it to me secretly, until my father noticed. He strictly forbade spoiling Mariana and me, and my little sister was offended with my father, and so was I. And once he came home earlier than usual, he sat me down at the table and said that there was an important conversation. Dad then explained that he could no longer support us and that everything we had would have to be sold. My mother almost had a heart attack. She was very worried and only asked what to do now. My father replied that now it was time for me to help him. I also had to earn money. That day I could hardly sleep, because I could not believe that we were now poor. I suddenly remembered again that feeling when every cent counts, when it is necessary to save everything, wait for wages, and sometimes go to bed hungry. I felt sick. I saw my mother's condition and felt sorry for her. And now we had Mariana, who had never understood what it meant to sleep on the floor in cheap apartments. I pulled myself together and made a plan of action. I understood that since I was a man, I had to take care of my family. My father did everything he could. I came to school, sat out classes, and then quickly ran to a cafe near the house and got a part-time job there. The receptionist was surprised. He didn't understand why I was working. I didn't want to explain for a long time. I just said that we needed money. He accepted me with no work experience and started the same day. It was hard. That night I came home exhausted, tired, and hungry. I ate quickly, did my homework, and went to bed. The next day, I was back at work after school. So two months have passed. I gave my entire salary to my parents and kept a small part for myself. My father and mother were proud of me, and I knew I was doing the right thing. Christmas was coming. I studied well, and so I finished my studies before the winter break with good results. Christmas morning began with unexpected surprises. Mom and Dad came into my room and handed me a gift box. There were car keys. I did not immediately understand what this means, and Dad said, You deserve a gift. Now I see that you are my son and a worthy man. I didn't know what was going on. 
Then my parents took me outside, where a car was waiting for me. In all the excitement, I almost choked. I bombarded my parents with questions about where the money came from, and when we went home, Dad admitted that he had invented the bankruptcy situation. I wondered why, and then my father said his favorite phrase, A real businessman does not disdain dirty work. At that moment, I was filled with a sense of joy and pride in myself at the same time. I didn't let the family down, it was important. I accepted the gift and my father said that I could quit my job for the duration of my studies. But I was so used to making money that I said I'd work for a while. Another year has passed since then. I still work in that cafe as a waiter and I like my job. People around me no longer laugh at me, they show respect. Now I go to work by car, and I divide my salary for the needs of my home and family. I think I'm doing everything right. What do you think? Write your opinion in the comments and do not forget to put likes.